Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders, um, the founders, some you've heard of, some you've never heard of. You know, David, I love talking about the challenge stories. Um, I had P90X founder Tony Horton on, who, yeah, we know he sold hundreds of millions of dollars of P90X, but he made money as a street mime. So the way he made food and rent money is he put his what? head on the street, he did street miming. And those are the things I love to hear. I and, did not know that. Yeah, it's crazy. That's crazy. Um, and, and that happens, you know, I love when people email me and go, I listen to the interview and that person now is a real person to me. They're not just uh, an iconic person because all of us go through these roller coasters of business and personal and uh, Julie Cl Clark of Baby Einstein, she talked about growing her company to $20 million with five employees selling to Disney, but she, she talked about beating cancer twice and kind of how hard that was. And uh, Atari founder, Nolan Bushnell talked about, you know, he was Steve Jobs' mentor. He talked about um, how Steve Jobs offered him 33% of Apple for $50,000 and why he said no. Um, and also when he um, lost his house, he took his family on an around the world journey. They didn't know that they lost the house, but um, he had so many friends in so many countries, they just stayed at people's houses all across the world and did like a trip around the world. So anyways, Dang. amazing people, ama like we have today's guest, and I I'm going to introduce in a second, um, who I consider a friend, a mentor, a colleague. And, um, but this episode is brought to you by Rise25, which I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. And we help B2B businesses connect to their Dream 100 clients and referral partners. Um, and help you run your podcast so it generates uh, ROI for you. And uh, it's been the best thing I've done for my business and my life because I've made amazing friends. I've been to weddings, gone on vacations, and it's a lot more personal than even business for me because I started podcasting um, by an inspiration for my grandfather who was a Holocaust survivor. And him, is, him and his brother were concentration camp survivors in Nazi Germany, and they were the only members of their family to survive. But what does that have to do with podcasting? Well, the, his legacy lives on because the Holocaust Foundation did an interview with him. Um, and so it really inspired me. It, I, I picture this as leaving a legacy for my guests and myself. And you can go to my about page on Spirit Insider where I have the full interview of the person from the Holocaust Foundation interviewing my grandfather. And um, it's really powerful. I, it, it gives me gratitude, appreciation for um, life and, and just the small things. And so if you have questions about podcasting, you know, I think every business should have one, obviously. Um, and you go to rise25.com or support at rise25media.com if you have questions. Um, now to today's guest, I wanna give a shout out to, to Tony G of Ship Offers and Roland Frazier. Um, you know, I've known David for a long time and we were on a joint call, all of us, and I was like, I am like so embarrassed. I should have dated on years and years ago, multiple times. So today's guest, um, you know, there are people in this world, David, that I highly respect and I observe that they are behind the scenes making everything happen. And they're the source of making sure certain really high profile people know each other. And you're one of those people. And I consider you a friend, a mentor, a colleague, and um, if you don't know David, he runs the infamous internet marketing party. He's done so for the past over a decade with iconic speakers and attendees, uh, Jay Abraham, Ryan Dice, Clay Collins of Lead Pages, and, and many, many more. What people don't know, if you only know him in that realm, um, that one dimensional realm is he runs a licensing company, a beauty brand, a health marketing company. And I think, you know, David, I was reading I was like, how do I prepare for this? I know David. Wow. Um, well, I was reading like Lee Richter who is a mutual friend of us, summed it up actually perfectly. Um, she said he's an incredible entrepreneur, leader in, in digital marketing space. He's, he has a genuine interest to connect with people. It is clearly evident and he knows how to elevate people in companies. And he is a genius at creating meaningful connections. And so if you get a chance to go to his events or collaborate with him, do it. So 
Um, David, wow. you know, thanks for being here. And I was thinking, <clears throat> who are the biggest givers in this universe? And that's who I want to share with the world. Um, and I consider you one of those people. So. Wow. Well, I, all I want to know is I want to know this David Gonzalez guy. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I think that may very well be if I, I can't think of a better introduction I've ever had. So thank you, Jeremy. Yeah. Thank you for having me. And I am, I am geared up and ready to provide as much value as I can to your audience. Yeah. I feel like whenever we talk, it, it, it's, it's really powerful. Um, so who do you consider the biggest givers in this universe, in your giver's universe? Mm, man, biggest givers in this universe to yeah. me, so a couple of them are no longer living. And mm. they're my two favorite heroes, human mm. living heroes. And one of them, or, you know, uh, that ever, that have lived, um, mm. that we know, uh, yeah. are, are Buckminster Fuller and Nikola Tesla. Mm. And what about and, that is living? Uh, that is living? Yeah. Um, Mohammed Yunus of, of Grameen Bank. Um, I'd say um, uh, there's a couple of others that, let me, um, geez, that's a really good question. If you, cause my brain goes to like the penultimate, like uh, biggest of the big. Um, hmm. I, the the um, there's a gentleman named Manoj Bhargava hmm. that he's the founder of uh, five uh, four hour energy is it four hour energy or five five hour five hour energy mm -hmm. and he he pledged to give ninety nine point nine percent of his uh, he's worth over four billion dollars wow. to humanity for doing for things that will serve the most people that will like he's looking at taking using engineering and innovation and the best minds available to create how can we make the most impact mm. with the that that that's going to help the biggest swaths of humanity not like you know what i mean so like one of the things he did is he created these these mechanisms that go out into the ocean and they're like the size of a big diesel engine and it uses solar the, the sun's power to evaporate this the the salt water then it takes that salt water. This, the solar power also takes a generator and pumps back the evaporated water and it'll do a thousand gallons of fresh, clean drinking water wow. an hour. And you can put a whole, a whole uh, tanker with these things on them and have a, an array of a thousand of these. So you could be doing over a million gallons of water wow. like with like no. And so he solved that, but like, that's one of them. Another one, is, you know, kind of like stuff that Bill, Bill Gates is doing. Um, and so, yeah, to me, givers are, are not about like, oh, I gave this much to this fund or this foundation, but they're doing things for all of humanity and not just the rich, not just the poor, but that when it gets done, I'm a big, I'm like Buckminster Fuller had this thought and there, he, you know, there were 4 billion people on the planet when he was, when he said this, uh, which was in the seventies. And he said, there are 4 billion billionaires on plant on, he called it spaceship earth. Cause we, this is a spaceship. We have a fuel source. It's the sun. And we do have a protective covering. It's called the atmosphere. And we're hurling through space on this spaceship. And we're just, we're just riders on it. Like when we, we, we came from it. But like, you know, it's, it's like, and when you look at it that way, he also created this map that made the entire, all the seven continents, one. Because he, he made little triangles all over it. It calls the Demaxion map. And when you unfold it, it, you can fold it out like this and it doesn't mm. have any distortion. If, you, if I draw something on a piece of paper and then I put it onto a globe, it's going to have a lot of distortion at different points. So interestingly enough, on that distortive map, the United States looks about the same size as Africa because Africa is down here and the United States is here. But when you unfold the Dimaxion map, the United States fits inside of Africa four or five times. Hmm. So, so where but, did but, you, well, here, yeah, let me tell you this. all of a sudden the entire map, you see Africa's connected to Asia's connected to the 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 north pole which is connected to canada which is connected to russia which is connected to 
Alaska, which is connected to the United States, which is connected to South America, and you see one giant, enormous um, continent that you wouldn't have been able to see the other way. And when you see it that way, you see it's not us versus them. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's all one big thing. And so to me, those the biggest givers are anyone who thinks of humanity as one and not from like a like a woo woo like kumbaya kind of sense but literally we are on a spaceship as one you know we all like that's one of the things that i'm really digging about covid and that i thought that like it would take aliens like nefarious aliens to do is to make us all you know and i don't think it's done it yet but if if things go a certain way then he bucky wrote a book called utopia or oblivion mm. critical it's you know critical path like those are the two options there is no like oh we might be okay no we're either going to obliterate ourselves or we're going to create utopia and the mm -hmm. reason there's four billion billionaires is because there's enough resources on this planet on this spaceship for every one of us to be a billionaire the only reason we're not is because of the way we think about things and so that to me like i can't think of anything that more penultimate as far mm -hmm. as being a giver than giving to every man, woman, child, whether they're anywhere on the spectrum from good to evil, you know, rich to poor, smart to dumb, anything like that. Like, I think if everybody has the re like equal resources, I'm not talking about socialism. I'm talking literally there's enough water, there's enough food, there's enough shelter, there's enough, all the stuff we want, there's enough ability to travel. Like anything we could possibly want, every single one of us could have as much of it as we want. So the problem is what? The problem is meant, uh, the thinking that God is here from all the way back to when this, this is all stuff that he talks about. And wow, this is crazy. Like, um, but essentially, at one point, we were just like, ugh. You know, like kill. I'm and then still we like went, that, David. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. But like as far yeah. as, yeah, no, but like as far as like we didn't have – any like we just like lived in her cave kind of thing and then right. at one point we were like oh well like we figured out our, our our area and then somebody was like hey let's put a boat in the water and see how far we can go and then they went far and started conquering other people and they're like oh i got all the gold oh, like <laughs> I want more gold i want more gold than that guy and, and then there's this thinking of like well i want to have the biggest castle and the most gold and i want to control the most people and i and and it's just like that was that was that part of humanity, but we've reached a point now where that's not necessary anymore. But there's like I want my God to be the God. I want my temple, my you know my my way of abortion or not abortion or like all these things that just really don't fucking matter. They don't matter. They just don't how do matter. you get people to realize that those things don't matter? Because there are, st you know, obviously that that thought still prevails for in certain people, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. That's why, to me, the biggest givers guess, are the one. The, to me, the biggest givers are the ones that are that are that are actively working on those things, so that we can get to the other. Because it's not going to work. If someone is, if people are going to be adamant that no, we have to do things this way, um, and and that that side is wrong and my side is right, we we're going to kill ourselves. We're going to kill ourselves as a, as a species. You know, we were talking before we hit record. Um, thanks for sharing that, by the way. I've yeah, I've heard Buckminster Fuller. I've never really studied deeply on on his work so i definitely wrote that down so i appreciate that this is the first time i've ever really come out about that like i like but the depth of which you in, introduced me i felt like i like there's been times in my life where i've had glimpses of, of feeling like my mission on uh I, you know my mission as a human is to help bring buckminster fuller he hmm. called himself bucky or guinea pig b because he gave all of his life to humanity and that's to make because his his work didn't come to fruition in his lifetime but just much like it took 80 years before nikola tesla's work started becoming you know bucky i think is going to be similar and I is wanna, that why you say tesla also just because of the effects 
that Tesla was trying to make it to where there was no meter between us and someone else. Like, oh, well, I want electricity. There's going to be this person that's going to put a meter between it. Oh, I want cancer medicine. There's going to be this company that puts like, you know, oh, I want to drive a car that'll go, you know, 2000 miles without needing a refill. There's going to be a company that, you know, like there's got to be this meter between us and the mm. thing. That's the, that's Bucky. He was the, about eliminating that the Tesla. Yeah. Like that's what, I mean, he created power and energy structures that would make it to where you could, you could uh, have free electricity for miles and miles and miles. Like you didn't, there was no wires necessary. You know mm -hmm. how like now you can just like put your phone on a thing and it charges, well, but it needs to physically be connected. He had a thing where he would just be like, he knew where to put these rods. He, I don't believe Tesla was a full human. I care, care what you want. I genuinely believe that, I don't genuinely believe it, but I don't disbelieve that Tesla wasn't part something else. And I think anybody that doesn't think that there's a high probability and likelihood of other intelligent, intelligent beings is my internet connection is getting unstable. <laughs> no, I got uh, you. I do believe in kismet and synchronicity, um, <laughs> but my internet just got stable. Yeah, man. I, I think that there's, then if you look, if you were to trick every single sand on the beach, uh, all the beaches in the world, there's that many, there's more than that number of galaxies mm. in the universe. And we don't even know most of them. So the idea of us being the only intelligent life is ego -centric. all of that ex exorbitant. Yeah, it's silly. And so I, I don't think that Tesla was fully human. And, and, and he, what he was trying to do is create a reality. Man, this is going to sound like, I hope this doesn't come off as conspiracy theory or, or nut, nut case. But like we're in COVID right now and I'm just going to speak my truth and <laughs> to make humans like one, one whole that like, no, there's no like, Oh, well, I got a bigger, you know, oceanfront property and bigger yacht and a big, and I don't know if that's ever fixable, but yeah, man, I think everybody, yeah. nobody has to work. I don't think to me, that's one of the big things is to make it to where no one has to work. Like everyone can just do they're like if every single you know right now they're passing out twelve hundred dollar checks to people that made less than seventy five thousand dollars. Somebody was telling me yesterday. There's people bragging about they got their twelve hundred dollar check, and he's like, I wouldn't be bragging about that if you're like a big internet guru because that means you made less than seventy five thousand dollars less. <laughs> yeah, if they had a picture so, of their Ferrari so in private say, plane, um, you're basically then, announcing to the world. Like, right, that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> That's very uh, true. Anyway, that's just it. Um, but the point, uh, <laughs> it, it's just it's like, oh, the, the COVID is the big reveal. We were talking about that. But um, yeah, I, 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 you know, when I think about, um, what was I, damn, that threw me off. The, the, you had just asked me a question and I was saying, um, oh, that I don't, yeah, if every single human, not just in the U.S., but human got not a $1,200 check, but an $800 million check. What would everyone do? That sounds scary to me. What actually? I let's talk about that. Yeah. Talk, let, let, seriously, I, 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 what, what about that sounds scary to you? I mean, it depends. What I, I guess what they use it for right i mean if you have an abundance of money yeah um what stages do people go through like considering maybe they haven't had it like you look at lottery winners i don't know what the yeah, stats yeah. are right within yeah. a certain period of time they blow all of it yeah but right? think about it like what, if every single person yeah. decides they want to go get a a, a ferrari a rolls royce they want to go to vegas i mean they they have so much money they can reopen the casinos, you know, like, okay. Like the, things reach a point of like, okay, you got a Ferrari. I got a Ferrari. Like everybody has a Ferrari. Who cares that we all have Ferraris now. They're becoming so less. 
<laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they come up with so you get eight hundred million dollars, David. Everyone. What do you do if I'm part of the co- yeah everyone, yeah, or yeah. if I just get it and not everyone else? Oh, um, that's different. How is it different? Tell me. Oh, it's so different. Because if every single man, woman, and child has $800 million, the things that I would probably want to think about or, or do would be different. Mm. They would be different. I, like, I would want to get certain experiences that would have innate intrinsic value because I'm, the only, I'm one of a few people that has that level of wealth. Mm-hmm. Whereas if everyone has that level of wealth, then I'm just thinking to myself, where do I derive deep joy? Yeah. It has nothing to do with a presidential suite hotel, a view, like some, some me really meaningful, joyful things. Yeah. I'm going to, you know, like I'll push back a little bit on you. Okay. I don't okay. know if you would do anything different if everyone had $800 million or if you just had it. Like if you want an experience, uh, yeah, I, would. I don't know if, if you, you if, would do if, it for the status of it. No, no, no. So would you do it for the status of it? Look, like if, if, yeah. if everyone got $800 million, I would probably, um, I, it would, my, the, the things that I would want and do would be more, um, um, uh, they would be more like consumptive mm-hmm. and egoic. Like, you think? Oh, I, whereas if, if everyone, if, if, if I'm the only one that got it, yeah. I would want to do things that, that would make everyone getting one happen. Does that make sense? So like, I would yeah. feel completely free to just dive all in to the work of uh, Buckminster Fuller, Nikola Tesla, Manoj Bhargava, like people that are trying to figure out how does all of humanity win at, with not the detriment of anyone. So would that change from everyone getting it or just you? That notion? No, no, because if everyone mm. got it, then they'd figure it out on themselves. Mm. You know, I mean, be like, okay, everyone has eight hundred million dollars. Everyone, everyone, prisoners in in prison right now, they get all of them, no matter what crime they did. Whether it's you know Unabomber, he gets eight hundred million dollars, but so does the the prison worker. So does everyone. Everyone. This so is what, weird. Cause, yeah. Like, but another like, okay. If everyone got that, like, this isn't about everyone getting eight hundred million dollar checks. This is about what would they do, right? Right. If they didn't have to work, right? Yeah. If no one had to work, no one, no one, no one. So, like, the prison guard doesn't have to work anymore. There's going to be some people that say, you know what? I don't have to work anymore, but I'm not okay with the people that are in prison that did the things that they did. They're really like dangerous to humanity, being on the loose. So, I'm going to donate my time. Who of us wants to donate our time to make sure that these people stay here? And by the way, you people that are in there, sorry, but like, if, let's get you the best psychotherapists and the best uh, psychedelic therapies to help you like get, come to like, let's wash that evil out of you and then come up with some amazing tests to see if they genuinely are ready to be put back into humanity. Like, Dude, I'm just telling you what's there for me. Like, so what would you do? Okay, assuming let's say you you got eight hundred million dollars, not mm-hmm. everyone gets eight hundred million dollars. Okay, how does that change what you do, or what do you do? Oh, because if I if everyone gets it, then I'm I'm thinking like, oh wow, like every it's it's a, it's it's it reminds me of of recess at school, like like when it was it was a field day, like. And there's no homework there's no like the only objective for everyone is to have fun so i would be like hey shit it's like this is this is the absolute disney world globally every single person is at disney world today versus oh wow walt disney's grand great granddaughter just found out about me heard this interview and decided she wants to give me 800 million dollars right she wants, I don't know if you've heard of her, but she will not fly on a private plane. She mm-hmm. will not, like, cause she's like, one day she was like, 
a teenager and had to go somewhere and there was a Boeing 747 that they put her on and she was literally the only person on there. And she was like, this is fucked. Like, I didn't know that. Yeah. And so she refuses and she, she won't even, she just flies on regular airplanes. Like, Mm. like, um, um, and is very, very much into like, like, what the hell? Like, people that are billionaires, like, they're very, very wasteful and very, like, mm. not, you know. So anyway, uh, yeah. If if only I got eight hundred million dollars, I would be like, okay, let's bring, let's bring the Manoj Bhargavas, the her, like, I don't even remember her name right now. Um, the people that are running the Buckminster Fuller Institute together. And let's come up with a plan that can help, you know, uh, you know, uh, like Bill Gates, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, they're working on, like, there's certain things they're working on that I believe are, are questionable. Um, and then there's certain things that I believe they're working, that are, they're working on that are amazing. Um, um, and so, What would yeah. you work on? Like your David I, Gonzalez I, I, Foundation. I, I'd work on kind of like what I've done in the internet marketing space, which is curating all of the best, brightest, bleeding edge um, humanists that like, cause I, I, there's a, there's a book out there that I haven't yet read, but it was highly recommended. And I got the gist of it, which is a, it's a book called uh, winner, winner takes all. Hmm. And it's basically based on um, the idea that a lot of billionaires that go on and, they get their billions by doing really bad things like very win lose kind of things. And, uh, that are not good for, for the greater good of humanity or like, they're like, they're like give, give, take, take, take. And then they like real cutthroat type practices. And and then they get their billions and then they're like, Oh, I'm going to do the, this build this big, beautiful, uh, Philharmonic orchestra and call it call it my name and then i'll in new in washington dc and even though i've done heinous things like that could be considered crimes against humanity but now i get whitewashed and i have a good name because i gave this center uh right next to the white house and like it was a 300 million dollar project and you just gave it but it's got your name on it and it's beautiful and it goes through the arts and it makes our country more beautiful like, yeah, but what about all this the crap you did over here? Like, that's not okay. It's like in Prodigal Son. The Prodigal Son comes back and says, I- I'm willing to go work in the, in, the, in the chicken coop and in the pig pen. And then the father, when he sees that, he's like, okay, he's, he's atoned for, his, what he, you know, for, for being a, a jerk off. Like, as opposed to just being like, oh, I got all this money. I'm going to do something that's really cool. And all of a sudden, my name's good. Like, mm-hmm. so... I would, you know, the part of what the person that recommended this book to me said is she said, find me a billionaire with empathy and then I will hold them in high regards. So I would, if I got $800 million, I would find people that have true deep, what do they do when no one's watching type of empathy? Mm. Yeah. I would fucking figure out who's given the most anonymously. I would get a high, a, a private detective, like, Mm. like better call Saul style, like people that (laughs) really like Mike and really find out like who are the people that are doing the most best generous work and aren't taking any credit for it. Well, that's why I asked the first question. I would put all of them in a think tank. Yeah. I would put all of them in a think tank and it would probably be anonymous because I wouldn't want their lives to be at jeopardy by people that want Shit, I don't even know if I want this to be put out there on a podcast because I do believe that the world's getting smaller and smaller and we're getting to know like who, like I, I'm believing more and more that there is this, this genuine fight uh, between good and evil. I want it all versus let's, let, mm. you know, we're, let's all just. just the just pandemic help. reveal. That's what, it's sort of what you're talking about, right? Kind of, I don't know that I would have said that, but. If that yeah. lands for you, then I'm that's why I was asking about in the beginning who you consider like some of the biggest givers because those the people those people are kind of behind the scenes. They don't feel the need necessarily to be front and center all the time, and they're just doing their thing. 
um, trying to make a contribution and don't feel as much of a need for the recognition, I guess, the way I see it. So I was yeah. curious of what you would say, because there's people, like you said, a couple of people I've never heard of, and maybe they're just kind of not giving anonymously on purpose, but they're not seeking all of the recognition for it. Yeah. Um, the, there's two things I want to talk about. Um, David, it's funny. Like I just kind of go where the conversation takes us. Cause originally I'm like, yeah, I want people to know, I mean, Dave is an internet marketing party. He does licensing. He has a beauty brand, but you're such a deep thinker that we'll just go with the deep thinking aspect. And, um, and I know we have a little bit of time before you have your next call. So I had pandemic reveal and a shift going all in. So I don't know in the last couple minutes, which one strikes your fancy of be most interesting for you to chat about. Give me one second. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to text my, cause you can edit this part out. So I was saying um, shift of going all in or pandemic reveal, um, which is most interesting to you right now. Can you ask the question again? Um, you, we are talking before we hit record and we're talking about pandemic reveals and I was going to explore what you meant by that uh, uh -huh. for yourself or what you're seeing. And or, you were saying there's just been this shift for you of going all in. Mm. So is that an or question? I meant. Yeah. Or yeah. I'm cool. So let's talk about going all in and the shift and maybe a little bit about what struck you to go down that path a little bit with your, what did your mentor say to you? Yeah. So I, about three years ago, I partnered with, uh, I'm more, much more of a visionary on the traction rocket fuel framework yeah. than a, than an integrator. And shout out to Gino Wickman and Mark Winters from rocket fuel. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and that, that thank you guys. Cause it's, changed my life if you're listening uh it's been a huge impact for me i actually talked to mark um this this week so yeah awesome yeah, i'm gonna email when we get off and tell him you said that uh, oh cool thanks um so yeah my wife and i have always run our businesses together and for you know 20 years or so and she'd always we didn't realize it until that book came into the fold that she was serving as my integrator and i was the visionary but if we had to rate us from one to 10 on our strength in either of those, I would give myself like a six on visionary. I'm not like an off the charts visionary. I'm like a, like a six, but she's like a five on in, integrator. So if we were playing, you know, arm wrestling, I was winning most of the time, which was keeping me at a, you know, hundred to $150,000 a year in revenue and, or, you know, income. And then it wasn't until I partnered with an integrator that my income more than tripled mm. and the workload more than diminished. But part of what that integrator, his name is Gonzalo, by the way, Paternoster. Um, yeah. yeah. Part of what that partnership did is he brought with it the, the idea and the concept of going all in and having extreme ownership and, I did that so effectively that it generated an enormous amount of success, an enormous amount of attention, an enormous amount of, of all of the, the trappings that come with it. And one of the negative trappings that comes with it is people, more people want to do business with you, right? And, more opportunities. Yeah, yeah. And with one of the things that Gonzalo's big on is when you say yes to one thing, you're saying no to 10 things. And you have to know that. And so I said no for two, two and a half years. And then at the end of that two and a half year period, there was some of the things that started coming on to the plate as far as opportunities and possibilities were so exquisite that it was like, I even brought them to him and I was like, dude, what do you think about this? And he's like, wow, that's, that's good. We should, yeah. <laughs> you want me in on that one? Or do you want to do that one alone? You know what I mean? <laughs> And so I know I, I said, say no, but let's do that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, because sometimes it just makes sense, right? Like, yeah. like the landlord in your building says, Hey, I think I'm going to sell the building. I might give you first right of refusal since you're already a tenant. Like that's not necessarily something you should just blanket say no to. Cause you said you're saying no to all opportunities. You should like 
you know, that one's worth like really putting on the, on the decision table. Um, cause it could accelerate the growth of what you're currently working on. Uh, that, that is the only thing you've said yes to. So anyway, with that in mind, um, uh, I said yes to one thing. And then as a result of saying yes to that one thing, it was a very natural yes to, to a secondary thing, which, which became a client to the first thing I said yes to. And then once that happened, it was like, wow, this is life's better this way. And then a tertiary thing came along that wasn't as related, but it just felt like, heck, this third thing, all, I didn't have to do anything operationally minded. All I had to do is just be me, kind of like just show up, kind of like showtime, just walk around and like say hi to people. Like it's almost like, really, You're gonna, you want me as a partner for, for that? Like, yeah, the cachet you bring, the, the network you like, what do you mean? You will want you as like a strategic advisor, but it, it almost felt like being a made man, you know, like, oh, okay, like you're going to put me in on this deal just like, because... Yeah, because of what you've done for the last 10 years. And I was like, oh, yeah. And then when I did that, I was like, oh, well, this fourth one is just like that. And, and it, everything was moving along beautifully until, bang, COVID-19 pandemic, global pandemic. And everything just starts to kind of like, you know, this goes on break and that. Like, and what seemed like it was rolling really beautifully and like it was all kind of tied and folded into each other, the pandemic has... I've been calling it the great reveal has really revealed that, that some of those things might have been a little bit more distracting now that, now that it's kind of like when you do triage, right? Like, Oh, we have a patient over here who's got a hangnail, but they're a professional pianist and they won't be able to play well. So that it is important, but then you've got somebody over here that's got like, a gunshot wound to the leg, you know, to the ankle. And then a person over here who's the guy literally like, you know, com took too much. I don't know, maybe uh, like whatever, like it goes, it goes on a ranking scale of like, you got somebody who's literally having a stroke or, or a, a heart attack. You've got to handle that one first. You know, it doesn't mean the pianist isn't important, but in the same way, this pandemic has helped me realize that those things were fine when I had plenty of doctors and nurses, operating rooms and emergency rooms. And sometimes right now those aren't there and I'm having to really think through what is most important. And um, going, going all in is becoming more important. Mm. So I think that's, that's all I've got to say about that. I felt like Forrest Gump there. <laughs> What is most important right now for you in your world? What's most important is becoming really clear on, on, uh, on how to align what I'm working on with where I want to end up and what really matters. And what really matters is my family, my health and uh, my, my, betterment of humanity like if i had to pinpoint three things you know because if i'm not healthy those other things two things don't matter and if i don't have my family then like i'm kind of alone and like but a bettering human if i can have those three things it's like whoosh, like everything's fine mm -hmm. everything's great so David, I always ask since this inspired insider, um, mm -hmm. what's been a low moment that you had to really yeah. push through and also on the flip side, what's been a proud moment that you're especially proud of. Um, so we'll start with what's been a challenging low moment. A challenging low moment has been, uh, one where, um, I think everyone has at some point in their life, thought of suicide but i don't think most people have gone to the point or maybe you know you're blessed if you haven't gone to the point where you actually started thinking about how to do it or started asking specific questions about it and uh i did that once uh to buckets and buckets of tears mm -hmm. and 
an absolute excruciating now I know was a tremendous de like depression based on egoic crushing. I had a, I had over $130,000 worth of personal unsecured debt uh, that, that I didn't know I had until I really started putting pencil to paper and all of our credit cards were maxed out. And I was, I felt totally ashamed totally like a failure uh and um just like like the all, the best option for my family and my legacy mm -hmm. was to figure out how i could uh you know not be on the planet anymore without anyone finding out that i did it part of me doesn't even want to put that on recording because if one of these days i die in a weird way like i don't want the life insurance companies to be like he's thought about this before <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh but uh yeah i i uh i thought about that and um and it was horrendous and i got out of it and now my net worth is more than triple what my <laughs> what my uh how did you get out of that? It was um, I got from out like of a, it. such a low point to uh, the the well one. I mean, I part of got out of it because I didn't want my wife and daughter to hear me bawling in the closet. I was like literally closed closed myself in the bedroom closet because I knew that there was lots of you know clothing in there and stuff that would make it quite not because I was planning on doing it doing anything, yeah. but I was, that's where I really finally let loose that like fuck like. I'm a failure. I'm, I've, I've got all this debt. I have no way of getting out. I have nothing on the horizon. I don't want to, this to be what my family goes through. I don't mm. want to like, so I was like, what's the, you know? Mm. And when I finally realized like, okay, I, I got to like, like clean up and wake up and wash myself out of this like blubbering mess. I thought about a friend of mine who I had helped out of a really like sticky situation. He was going through a really horrible divorce with a uh, with a woman who had a, a, a an addiction and some clear mental illness, but the court, but she did a good enough job of hiding the addiction and putting on a different face when she would go into court. And she had an amazing attorney, so it was just really weird situation where I had to help him with some stuff that that was kind of I put myself at risk, but I I it was the right thing to do. Uh, it was to help some of his pets that she was holding hostage. And like, you know, it was, it was weird time, lot, long time ago. And I thought of him because I had helped him in such a deep, important, vulnerable point of his life mm. that I reached out to him and I just felt like I, I can tell you what's up and I'm thinking this and mm. he gave me the assignment to go to the mirror uh, and just know that it, this might take five minutes, this could take five hours, but to look deep into the core of my pupils until I was knew that I was absolutely positively looking, thinking, talking about me, only me, no, nothing else distracting, and to just tell myself over and over, this too shall pass, this too shall pass, this too shall pass, until I believe it. And that I did not have permission to look away from the mirror until I absolutely started to believe it. And it took me about, no, 15, 20 minutes and I started laughing and then I just like broke the thing and mm. like it broke that like dark cloud. Yeah. So that, that's Thanks really for sharing that. You know, <clears throat> first of all, it's, it's really hard to share those things. And, and I, I guarantee you that someone's going to hear that and who's going through it or know someone who's going to go through this and give that advice to someone who's going through a really tough time. And so you sharing it is, is going to help, even if it helps one person, you know, which it will, at least one, it's, um, you know, worth being vulnerable and sharing like such a tough thing to share. So I really appreciate that. Yeah. So, yeah. um, uh -huh. and now on the flip side, <clears throat> a proud moment, a big milestone, something, you know, you always hear David, uh, six overnight success after 10 years or 20 years or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's been that maybe moment for you or a, a moment? There's probably many moments, but. Mm, yeah, there's many. I'm um, thinking what 
mind was more family oriented yeah. than business oriented. Sure. But, um, and I have a handful of these, but there was one day that my daughter who's 18 now, but she was 17 at the time, I believe was in a real funk, like a real funk. And she was just having like, she, she was just in a space where like a head space that I could tell she, she wasn't clinically depressed. She was like in that range and just, I've done my best to not be an overbearing parent, to be an inspirational parent and to give her the resources she needs if, she, if and when she asks or needs them. Um, but we've always had kind of like a, she's been more of a mama's girl than a daddy's girl. You know? I have two of those. No one. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and um, she's always kind of resisted my advice and my wisdom. And it's been a very painful thing. But every once in a while, we'll have cracks in that. That mm. will just like, mm. it's enough to even like make me emotional right now. But one such moment was uh, she was having a really, really tough epoch. Like, like a period of weeks, you know, for, for the epoch in the context of teenager, right? And it was, you know, and the long and the short of it is she, I asked her if she was willing to do a little quick exercise and she was in a low enough place that she's like, yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, what, what, what is it? And I said, I want you to take a piece of paper and on the left side of the paper, I want you to write, a, to create a little thunderbolt. Mm -hmm. And on the right side, I want you to create a number. And I'm sorry, I, I, I messed up the punchline. I said, I want you to write the number of things on the left side that are uh, things where you're creating. And on the right side, I want uh, things that you, you have control over and that you can, ah, like, what's the word? Like, can, can like, like ignite that you can have agency over versus things that you don't or, or, or can't. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, also it was, it was create versus consume. And she made a list and I was expecting that the things that were going to be uh, that it was going to be really long on the consume and no agency versus the other and it wasn't it was the other way around and i was like what the hell because she was really good at knowing how much stuff she could control and da 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 mm. and then so on the moment i had to on the fly say okay good that's step one step two is i want you to write a little lightning bolt and a number and the lightning bolt is how much energy do you derive from it and this the number is how much energy does it take for you to kickstart it does that make sense yeah mm -hmm. so like surfing through tiktok videos which are really fun and easy to like it's like like never-ending popcorn <laughs> for your for your like for your uh what is it the little the, the like the adrenaline rush or something yeah the, the yeah. other it's another it's another chemical but yeah you get it um like she she wrote down like how much how much gratification and satisfaction those things gave her. And they were really low numbers. But the, the number of how much it took was also really low. And the things that had higher numbers had higher gratification. And she couldn't even finish the list. And she's like, thank you, dad. She threw her hands around my, my shoulders. And like, it was just like, I just was, streaming crying but from pride and from joy that like mm. like 20 minutes later i asked her what she was up to and she was still like making plans on how could she could on her own do more of the things that 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 required more of her to start and to do does that make sense mm -hmm. yeah so sum up really quickly just so people can follow along so yeah. there's two columns one on the left one on the right the one on the left is the things that you actually have control over that you can create. And then on the right is things that you don't have control over that you don't create. Is that right? Yeah. You consume them. You consume them. 
Okay. Yeah. Or you like it's either you consume them or you don't have control over them. Like mm. getting invited to a sleepover that the other people in your core group did get invited to. Mm, mm. Right. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm going to use this exercise. I want to make sure I'm clear on it for my two daughters who are six and eight. So I'm sure yeah. in 10 years, I'll be having this exact same conversation. So uh, I want to make sure I get it right. So the can you don't cons uh, the right is you consume. Yeah, you consume them or you don't have control over them. Okay. And then the left is you create them or and you do have control. Over and you them. do have control. And, and then, then you just, write then those just, down. Just, just take inventory of how much, uh, how many activities they're engaging in that are on the left versus that are on the right. Mm. And chances are they're, cons they're consuming more or participating and giving more value to things that they don't have control over. Mm. So focusing on the left column. Yeah. And what is, she surprised me with was she had a bigger list on this side, on mm. the left column. Mm. But I was like, what the hell? And then I was like, okay, but now let's, let's add these, the energy that it gives you, the, the oomph that it gives you and the energy that it takes required to, to kickstart it. And the things that were on the right were had very little energy and very little kickstart. And the things mm. that were on the left had very high energy and very high right. kickstart. But I had to, <laughs> it was revealed. So just identifying those things is powerful. Yeah. That you actually have control over. Yeah. And, and like, to, cause I think we just get into this funk where we're just like, Oh, well, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to do this thing. And before you realize it, like, shit, there's not, I, I, um, yeah. Like I'm engaging in so many things that I do yeah. that I'm just consuming or that I don't have control over. Yeah. So of course I'm going to be depressed. Yeah, I love that. And I know you have to hop off David. So thank you. First of all, thank you so much. Where should we point people online to, learn more, check out more of what um, you have going on. I mean, internetmarketingparty.com is obviously an yeah. obvious one. And David Gonzalez agency. David Gonzalez agency.com. Yeah. And um, okay. thank you so much, David. Yeah. Thank you, Jeremy. Appreciate you. What I've got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the same right now. I'm feeling like a hundred grand.